insert sad trombone noise here. There is no more mechanical Durace or Ultegra. That's it, it's done. Shimano's not making it. Hey guys, bicycling is starting to vlog. Um, we're not really sure where it's gonna be yet, but it'll probably be a lot of bike tech. Uh, it'll probably be a bunch of me. My name's Dan, one of the tech editors here. And the first episode is gonna be about the new Durace and some old Durace and some Durace that's also going extinct. Probably too much Durace. So that's what we're gonna talk about with my buddy Trevor. Trevor, come here. See, he knows how to turn the microphone on. Somebody explained that to him. I feel like it's been kind of in the works for a bit. Everybody kind of knew it was coming. Shimano has like a pretty consistent release cycle of every four years or so. I would say the biggest issues that I think folks had with 9100, which is the previous generation, was the brakes which people complained about endlessly. And I think that was really, I mean, it was really I mean, good brakes. Yeah, I think 9100 was like, when that group set came out, it was kind of like the pinnacle of what could be done with a group set. Obviously, it's the way it is every time a new group set comes out, but right. it just, it held its own for a very long time to the point that 9100 was up against 11-speed ETAP and 12-speed ETAP, and people still were going to 9100. Right. Uh, I mean, shift speed has always been excellent on Durace. According to Shimano, the shift speed on 9200, which is this generation of Durace, is faster still. On the rear, you're basically completing shifts before you have a chance to even lift the finger off the button. Like, it's very instantaneous. Shift speed on the front is also improved, but I feel like we're kind of burying the lead. The most important thing is there's an extra gear back here. So we're now finally at Shimano 12 speed. Which now brings Shimano up. Up to and, SRAM and Campy, Campy, although Campy's already working on 13 speed apparently. But this is really exciting. Shimano managed to fit that extra cog on the existing free hub body. So no new, no new free hub body standard. You can put a 12 speed cassette on your current wheels, no issues, which is huge. Yeah, I think that's gonna be kind of, I mean, they, they definitely took their time. They figured out what people want, which is like not to have to do a whole system change when you buy a new right. group set. In theory, if you were able to purchase this group, which with current supply shortages in the bicycling industry, this is probably gonna be vaporware for at least six months. I mean, we're not um, even seeing it on pro team bikes. Very, I mean, it's very rare on a pro team bike. No, I, I don't know when we will actually see it on Pro I was expecting bikes. to see some more in the Vuelta, but nothing. I see nothing. I will say that it looks visually very similar to the existing stuff. I mean, I was on a ride with a friend of mine and he was kind of like, um, he basically said, if you hadn't pointed it out to me, I wouldn't have noticed that it's new. If you look at, you know, the main visual differences, the crank is slightly more symmetrical now a bit more angular, um, like harder, harsher lines, I would say. But yeah, visually, this is a very similar group. Um, the biggest difference, and well, it's funny, because we picked a bike with fully internal cable routing, so we can't show it to you, but if you look at this bike, there's no wires, right? The shifters are completely wireless, and they talk to the rear derailleur, which now has the Bluetooth D-Fly uh, built into it, you do all the charging, all the E-Tube app stuff through the rear derailleur. It talks to the front derailleur and then there's a battery in here. So you have a wired rear end and then you have wireless shifters up here which are powered by two coin cells which you can actually, unlike SRAM, you can check the battery life of your coin cells without pulling out your phone. You just hold down these two little buttons and this, there's a little LED, which I don't know if you can see blinking. 
but what about junction boxes? There's no more junction boxes. Uh, every function of the junction box is now integrated and this is a rear derailleur. So the button on the rear derailleur is the same as your junction A uh, button on 9100. You plug in the rear derailleur to charge it. You can run the whole system wired and the reason they kept that um, option is for folks that kind of need the best battery life and don't necessarily want to mess with coin cells. So without wheels, the entire group, which is cranks without a power meter, shifters, brake calipers, um, a cassette, two rotors, and a chain. Oh, sorry, two wires and a battery as well. So everything you need. Everything you would need to build up a bike is around $4,200, um, which is pretty ridiculously expensive. But for people who want to spend a little less, and this is the first time that Shimano is actually doing this, they're releasing Ultegra at the same time. Functionally, the two groups are identical. Same shift speed, 12 speed, all the new braking tech, Ultegra just weighs more, and it's more of a gray finish rather than a black. So keeping in line with what they've been doing. Yeah, essentially, I mean, visually, both new Ultegra and new Durace, very similar to the old stuff. It's functionally that they're vastly different, right? You have the extra gear in the back, you have the wireless shifting. The other big thing is the new brakes. The brakes are totally different. On Durace, they're uh, forged one-piece calipers. On Ultegra, they're gonna be two-piece calipers that are bolted together. Um, the biggest thing that Shimano has changed is they've added 10% more pad clearance. So yeah, one of my biggest complaints always with when I first switched to Shimano hydraulic, shift, uh, hydraulic braking was on long extended braking or hard steep braking uh, that the pads would rub pretty bad on the caliper at the end of the braking. You'd have all these pinging sounds or you'd have these wild squealing sounds. And it just, it's a nuisance. It really doesn't affect much, but no it's one, annoying. No one likes a noisy bike. And no, nobody, no, nobody wants to spend 4,200 bucks on a group and then have it sound like a, you know, a bucket of rusty nails or something. Yeah. The other thing that folks would complain about with Shimano braking is it's very on off, right? So Shimano um, wanted to address that issue and they did it by putting in an, a mechanical cam in the lever. They're calling it servo wave. And the idea is, um, is that at the start of the lever stroke, you're actually pushing more fluid to eliminate free play. And then as you progress through the pedal stroke, the cam kicks in and you start pushing less fluid. So you push more fluid to make initial pad contact at the rotor, and then you start to push slightly less to give you more modulation and sort of help eliminate that on-off feeling. So the, there's no increase in braking power. Shimano didn't feel the need to kind of increase braking power because their brakes were already very strong. Uh, what, what they did want to do is improve modulation. And I mean, I will say the brakes are significantly better. I do, um, I do kind of like the new, like a little bit more prominent of a top to the hood. Cause I right. spend a lot of time kind of holding my hoods in this position. I don't know what to say, like what would it be? Grips space? Yeah, just, it's, it's, a larger, it's a larger hood, right? So you, you kind of have a bit more real estate. Uh, it's a bit more prominent. You still have the two buttons up here that you can uh, program, which is nice. Um, I will say that the texture on 9100 is kind of nicer than this. Apparently it's a different rubber, which should be a little bit grippier, but I still prefer the old texture personally. For the 10 people that still ride rim brakes, um, we should talk about rim brakes. So this will now forever be known as the most modern mechanical rim brake Durace group. We suspect that there will be a mechanical 105 group set, but that's gonna be the top 
level mechanical group, road group set from Shimano moving forward. But could we still get uh, 12 speed shifting with rim brakes? Yes, you can, you can still get 12 speed DI2 rim brake. The shifters are gonna be identical to the current 9100 rim brake levers. It is the same exact rim brake caliper. Um, and the main, the main thing that I think folks will wanna know is they're not planning on bringing any rim brake parts to North America. So um, I'm sure you'll be able to get it if you're really motivated. Uh, but it seems like the only reason Shimano is continuing to make it is basically for Team Ineos. Do you have to run it wired or is there going to be a wireless option? There's not going to be a wireless option. So with Brake, you do have to run it wired. The one, well, I feel like I keep saying the one other thing we should there's, mention, there's but there's a like lot, a million things a we should mention. Power meters. We can talk um, about power meters. Nah, I don't really care about power meters. There will be a power meter crank set. It's going to be $1,000 more than the non-power meter crank set. So knock yourself out. There's not a new rotor. They are carrying over their existing XTR rotor from uh, their mountain bike group set to the road because if you're paying attention to pro bikes, uh, you'll notice that most pros have been running these rotors. They're a little bit lighter. They work a little bit better. Um, so Shimano's kind of eliminating a part rather than creating a new one. And same thing goes for the chain. This is actually an XTR chain. It's, uh, so XTR is a mountain bike group set that's 12 speed. Instead of creating a whole new chain or like SRAM for some reason having two incompatible 12 speed chains, Shimano is using the same chain on their mountain bike stuff and on the road stuff. The main thing that we want to try and figure out actually is if it's possible to put an 11 speed crank set on this group set, and will that work? Yes. Can, if we, that, go, I mean, can it, we actually if, go do that? We could try, yeah. We can't find the little plastic tool that Shimano uses for uh, setting crank, I don't know, what's the term for it, Trevor? Yeah, preload, crank preload. Yeah. It's really annoying. I'm almost like giving up hope here. It's like, did we miss it? Well, no, I mean, the thing is, is like, Joel's just taking the day off and we're just rummaging through his stuff. He's, he's not gonna watch this, so it doesn't matter. So, what we wanted to figure out is, <laughs> basically we're trying to figure out the minimum amount of parts you'd need to purchase to upgrade to 12 speed, right? And the main, our main question was, would an 11 speed crank work with 9200 durace? And the answer is yes. Um, it's, Shimano is probably going to say no, and the reason they'll probably say no is because the shifting performance between this 11-speed crank and this 12-speed crank is probably not going to be quite as good. Um, a lot of the shift performance Shimano has comes from their cranks and chain rings, which are very stiff, and I'm sure they've made several improvements that they want to uh, maintain, but if you're somebody like Trevor who has a Cannondale and has a hologram crank on their bike, you might not want to get rid of your crank set, so it's nice to know that it works. Um, if you have a nice power meter and you don't want to spring for a new Durace one, you can keep using it. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's probably the most compatible group, backwards compatible group set that adds a whole another gear, which is kind of cool. But yeah, I mean, shift's fine. Probably not as 
quick as the 12 speed crank, but pretty damn good. The reason why I feel like Durace is important isn't necessarily because it's like the latest and greatest. In fact, this group set is actually heavier by I think 30 grams than the current 9100 or the previous generation 9100 group set. It's important because it kind of gives us a peek at where Shimano is going in their R&D. The, all this tech, 12 speed wireless shifting, the improved brakes, all this stuff is gonna trickle down to 105 and lower stuff. Um, so while this is cool, this is a really expensive bike that a lot of people aren't necessarily gonna ride. But it's interesting from a tech perspective because it's where the bike industry is going. Right? Who knows when availability will actually be. I heard that Trek will have Project One bikes available with 9200. Mm -hmm. but I mean, I'm sure you'll definitely see some bikes coming out with 9200 every now and like the high end bikes, and they'll probably only bring like four of them to the States, like a size run. Probably. But if, if you get a hold of this group set, tag us on Instagram, Facebook. Don't use Facebook. Yeah, who, no one uses Facebook. Uh, Twitter, Dan likes Twitter. At Dan Chavanel. <laughs> All right, so thanks for watching and yeah. Let us know what you want to know more about. Um, check out the full write-up on bicycling.com. Stay tuned for more vlogs as we figure this out. And if you have any questions, Cut. let us know. <laughs> Can you just do a montage of us trying to do a closing take? Can it just fade slowly away into the Curb Your Enthusiasm theme song? Well, we could get that software that, we could just deep fake the whole thing. Mm -hmm.